So opening night, I literally, first time I've ever done that. Uh, it was kind of cool. Uh, I'm not really a night show kind of guy, but I have just seen Venom The Last Dance. And boy, what a time it was. It was a really, really, really decent film. I really enjoyed it. It was a good time. Eddie walked weird the whole time. That was my dad's only complaint. But um, it's kind of this tradition me and my dad started way back in 2018 to go see every Venom movie right when it comes out. So we saw the first one. And I made sure like to get good grades back then so I can go see it, which was kind of funny. And then um, we saw the second one during COVID. It was like the second movie we watched in a year. And then we just saw this third movie. And now since I have a job now, I finally, you know, was the one to buy tickets when my dad bought the popcorn. So that was cool. But... I want to talk about this movie. And this movie was pretty interesting. Um, I will do no spoilers right now. Then I'll go into a couple spoilers at the end. But uh, overall, my overall score is it's a 7 out of 10. And if you look back on my Venom Let There Be Carnage review... I was fanboying out way too hard and I gave that a 9 which is kind of crazy because people consider the second one the worst one which after seeing this one I think they're kind of right I think it's the weakest out of the trilogy probably maybe it's recency bias but like um this one definitely held a lot more energy from the first one so even though I gave that a 9, that's probably more, like, as a fanboy of, like, Carnage and stuff and actually seeing him on the big screen, I guess that makes sense. But uh, objective scoring, I'd probably give it, like, a 6. This is a 7. And the original is, like, a 7.5. So, yeah, 7 out of 10. Um, it was a really, really fun experience. It's a joyride. It's a road trip type of movie while they're on the run and it's got to like what I like about it is it just jumps straight in no setup no nothing but it does make me really disappointed because it keeps reminding me of the failure that they did with Venom and the multiverse type of stuff which just really upsets me because they do this whole reveal at the end of Venom Let There Be Carnage that He's going to be in Spider-Man No Way Home. And then he's at the end as a post credit scene. And just like gets sucked back into the other universe and leaves a piece of the symbiote. That's it. He's just a cameo piece and a little setup for when Tom Holland gets the symbiote. It was such a wasted opportunity and like such a disappointing thing that came out of nowhere. And... Um, you just get slapped in the face from it again, like coming into the movie, it picks up straight where it leaves off, except the, uh, Marvel sparkle circles are changed into, uh, these new kind of portals that are connected with Null and, uh, the Neo something, I forgot, I forgot the name of the Symbio Hunters, but they were cool. But it just kind of slaps you in the face with that. But that's like my only really big complaint. And that's just from the past. But the whole movie just uh, has a really good like straight into its start. You get Noel like talking and on his backstory. And like what this film's going to be about right before the uh, opening Marvel uh, crawl. And it, it, the whole thing with Null and Andy Serkis was so cool, even though, like, it's just a Thanos with him sitting in his chair, other than a couple of shots where you could see see him, and then at the very end where he, like, uh, raises his face, like, in the post credit scene, and you see his uh, face. That actually scared me. I wasn't expecting that to be. <laughs> so, uh, 
weird looking. Like, it, it was a really good design, and to see Null on the big screen was just nuts. So, that was cool. And just uh, 50 miles an hour just keeps ramping up from Eddie returning home to him figuring out he's a fugitive. And then you just keep getting the pieces together. Um, I think the weakest part is probably the government subplot. Like, all of it, at the end of the day, adds together. But there are some unnecessary things. Like, to introduce Agony, there was this one doctor character that her brother got struck by lightning and she for some reason like had a lightning scar and then they connect and and like Agni's like speedster symbiote it, it was weird but like you could probably do without her character or not like knowing the backstory but I guess it's just so you can try to like her I think you like her friend a lot more than her at the end of it but yeah and then we get other subplots with the government guy and it, it's a little draggy and uh and like the whole thing kind of just uh cinches together and connects because you uh have eddie on the run from the police and then the government and then the symbiotes who are looking for the codex. What is the codex? Well, um, a little spoiler here. It's not too big, but basically the whole point of it is that when Venom revived Eddie from the first movie, they their uh, life force combined and created this thing called the codex. And if one of them gets captured... By the uh, symbio hunters, Null can Null can be freed, and that's the whole point. They're on the run, and they're trying to prevent that. If one of them dies, the Codex is destroyed forever, and that's the whole point of the movie. So, um, it's just really fun. Like you get Mrs. Chen coming back. You have Eddie interacting with this family in a cute moment with Venom saying like Eddie would have been a great dad. And it's, it's just like a nice little story and everything that just comes to the climactic end. And this is where we get into heavy spoiler territory. So the end, the end, Eddie is at the government base and him and Venom are still on the run from the symbiote hunters. And there are just, like, so many coming out left and right. They have to release all the other symbiotes that have to bond with other people, with the scientists and the army men, to try and, like, hold them back just a little. And even then, the symbiote, the symbiote hunters are destroying them so easily. And there's just, like, no way out. So what they have to do is... Um, just like lead them away and like try different things, but more and more and more come out. So at the end of it all, Venom said, like, this is it. And um, just uh, leads into the ultimate sacrifice where he takes all of them into one. He bonds with them and then he spits out Eddie and then he uses this acid from Area 51 to disintegrate them and himself in turn destroying the codex and the hunters and making sure null can't get out so that's the end venom actually dies and i wasn't expecting that um i mean it's called the last dance for a reason but like venom actually dying was actually not on my list for iconic characters dying in 2024 so yeah, I was a little emotional. Um, I mean, I don't know why. It's just this fucking angry dickhead monster that connects with this bum guy that lost everything. But you just feel for Eddie because that was his only thing left. He lost Anne. He lost his home. He lost everything. 
And you see, at the end, he doesn't even go back to San Francisco. He stays in New York. Like, Venom wanted to see the Statue of Liberty. So, he makes up for that and does it in his own time. But, Eddie lost everything. All he had left was Venom. So, like, losing him was really, really, like, emotional. So, yeah, I mean, it was, like... A really, really good send-off, I would say. But it like begs the question, how will Tom Hardy come back to it, if ever? Probably not. Who knows? But it was a really, really good send-off. So then, like I mentioned earlier, you get that post credit scene with Noel, and I'm curious what they would do with that but i i think it's really cool um overall i'm just like happy as a fan that like this whole trilogy happened that venom movie was made in the first place venom's always been my favorite character like it's always been like black suit spider-man no i don't like spider-man i like black suit spider-man give me the venom uh cartoon give me the, the venom figure Give me the Venom birthday party. I love Venom. So, like, seeing that first movie, like, really, really made my heart full. And then seeing all three in this pretty fine trilogy was cool. It was cool. Now, I can see that the movies aren't perfect. Hell, I mean, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. Like, and I gave the other one that I said was a 9, a 6. So... If you hate me for my opinion just because I enjoy something, that's fine. But, like, it, it's, like, you can't, like, objectively say that it's complete shit. Because there are some good parts about it. Because passion goes into this, and Tom Hardy is clearly, clearly into the character enough to write and create and um, star as the character of Eddie Brock and his portrayal of Eddie Brock will not be forgotten. So, end of the day, I really enjoyed it. Um, 7 out of 10. And yeah, uh, <laughs> opening night, movie night is a little wild, but I don't know, I enjoyed it. So, I'll probably do it again. Depends on the movie. Maybe it might be Minecraft, but I don't know. But yeah, guys, um, anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the flip side in the next one. Peace out.